near the submarine zone, officer. Yes, the convoy will be with us at dawn. Oh, that's fine. That'll give the men a feeling of security. Turning in? No, I think I'll go below first and take a look around. Well, the men are feeling a bit jumpy. You treat them like children, Mac. <laughs> they are children. <laughs> so you know we're in the danger zone. Ah, oh, nobody can see it. I got my hand over it. Well, I saw it. Got these men too close for us to lose them now. If you want to bump yourself off, jump overboard. How many, how many cars do you want? Oh, you you got to take some, sir. And I'll take four dollars. What do you all want to ride this now? Dear Donna, I'm sending you five dollars. But not this week. I got hooked up in the crap game. You'll have to wait your wages for next month. Don't you fret yourself about her, buddy. She won't stay with her very long. I ain't gonna have one yellow belly sissy run hog wild and getting everybody upset around here. And what you need to, Andy, that's mighty nine patriotic sometime. Well, I only said, America, I love you. Uh, I don't want to die for no country. I want to live for it. So does I. But they ain't asking us what does we choose. They don't care. We gonna die, I knows it. I'm gonna be killed. I dream every night about the black dog. Nobody knows what lies ahead right from the day they're born. Nobody knows what lies ahead beyond tomorrow's dawn. One way there's trouble and no mistake. One way a rainbow, which will you take? My way leads to good green pastures. My way leads to big high mountains. Lonely road with a heavy load. Brother, are you walking my way? My way is no field of clover. My way is no path of glory. Glory rolls with a heavy load. Brother, are you walking my way? When you start your weary heart, maybe. My way, 
I guess I've got you to thank for this, Captain Mack. You're quite wrong. You had it coming to you. Just remember, the non-com protects his men. The officer tries to protect them all. Well, sir, I don't want the boys to think I'm a teacher's pet just because you've known me a long time. <laughs> they won't. They'll look up to you as they should. By the way, as much as I'd like to keep you with me, I'm trying to get you transferred to the medical corps where you belong. Make some use of that three years training. I'd sure like that. Thanks. All right. Well, that's all, Corporal. If you see anything wrong, just let me know and I'll back you to the limit. Thank you, sir. You see the men keep wearing their life belts. Don't forget the boat drill. As you know, I'm a bit of a stickler for that. Yes, sir. Right. Oh, they tell me their hands got hooks on their things so they can pull your backbone right straight through your tummy. Right. That must hurt last year. Well, sure ain't no place for soft. Them hindies can spot a guy that's yellow as far as they can see, and they goes right straight for him. Boy. The show is butchered. They just love bisecting a man. I know that you're trying to drive me crazy, but I won't go, I tell you! We can't help it if you yell and scared to die. Who's gonna die? Would you poke your nose near for Corporal Jackson? You and this rat Jones are about the lowest, meanest lice I ever ran into. And right now, you're gonna stop this hazing. Hazing, huh? Who's you off to my stripes? You keep away from me, huh? Or I'll get you kicked out this here army. I don't want your stripes, and I'm not gonna turn you in. But I'll turn you inside out if you don't stop picking on boys like this. Get out of here. You too. <laughs> don't let these cheap bullies get under your skin, kid. You're braver than you think. I know it. You wouldn't want that pretty little wife of yours to see you acting like this, would you? Get up on deck. Forget it. Come on, six, and it ain't for no baby shoe. Knock him down. Cap, that six up and bit him. Let it ride. No, 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 no. Sure, boy. Get him, get him, get him. Get him, get him. Get him, get him. Not too for me now, not too for me. Cap, seven, shoot the one. Shoot the one. Come on, put it down. Come on. Submarine on support bow. Thank you. 
Shipping a lot of water. Keep them going. And report any water in the engine room. Aye, sir. You take care of your troops. I'll get you the board, though. I've never lost a ship yet. situation was capably handled by both the officers of the ship and those of the military units aboard. But there are one or two questions that have not yet been cleared up. Major Barnes. According to your report, Major, you lost six men and one NCO when the ship was torpedoed. How exactly were these men killed? Five were killed with the actual explosion of the torpedo. And the other two? Private face went crazy with fear and jumped overboard. Well, naturally, it's impossible to maneuver a partially disabled ship to effect a rescue. Captain Hammer rightly refused to stop. That leaves one to be accounted for, a Sergeant Gamey. Well, I, I don't exactly know how the sergeant lost his life. When Gamey was brought to the deck, he was dead. From his injuries, I gathered he was uh, wounded by the explosion and subsequently drowned. Who were the two men who rescued those trapped below decks? Corporal Jackson and Private Tag. In order to ascertain the full facts, I think we should hear the stories of these two men. Call them. We, 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 we were struggling away at the door, but it was stubborn as a mule. We was having a hard time when Sergeant Gamey came along with a gun in his hand and cussed and swore and slammed me up again the wall and said, get out of there. And what did you do? Most of my breath was knocked out of me. I didn't do nothing. Jackson? I know yeah, this go, happen. I was thrown to the sergeant board myself. The sergeant says unless he got topside, he'd blast his black belly wide open. Those was his words. He was tough and mean. What did Jackson do? I want the truth now. Well, he popped Gamey right into kissing. <laughs> and then Jericho got the dog. Seems to me that there's been a deliberate attempt to suppress the facts in this matter. That'll be all. Corporal Jackson. Is Private Tag's evidence substantially correct? Yes, sir. But then I... you've been guilty of two of the most heinous offenses known in the Army. Disobedience of orders and striking your superior officer. In this case, so viciously that it resulted in death. Before you go on, sir, I'd like to tell you a few things about Corporal Jackson. That is an order. I've known Jackson for many years, sir. College, he had an excellent record as scholar and athlete. And as a soldier, his conduct has always been exemplary. Another thing is, sir, he's very popular with the men. So the moral effect on the Negro troops of prosecuting Jackson for an essentially heroic act would be, well, it would be very bad, to say the least. It seems to me, sir, that Sergeant Gamey lost his head in a crisis, or he wouldn't have ordered Jackson to abandon his attempt to rescue the imprisoned men, which he actually did. He saved several lives. Your opinions, Captain Mack, though commendable, are evidently biased, and I'm not in agreement with them. Discipline must be maintained, and I have no alternative but to recommend the arrest of Corporal Jackson for murder. Shoot Jericho for what he done. Oh, they can't, huh? 
Hardy can do anything in this man's army. Money. Money. No more, my lady. having to submit everything through the proper military channels. You guys act as if we'd lost the war. What's up? Jackson. Looks bad. Yes, headquarters turned down our appeal for clemency. Although every officer in the battalion signed it. And that's tough. Elegant Christmas he'll have. <laughs> Major, will you take a chance and send the cable to the Secretary of War? We might get a bit of action that way. We'll try it. They can no more than break us. Thanks. I'll go and cheer the old devil up a bit. He's probably feeling pretty low. See you later. I don't want anything to eat. Come on now, Jericho. Snap out of it. All right, I'd eat that. Any news, Captain? Yes, the Major sent a cable to Washington. That should do the trick. Washington's a long ways off. They're pretty busy now. I'm grateful to you, Captain. I know you're doing everything. Oh, I know it's tough, all right, but then war is tough, isn't it? Yes, war. Did I want to learn how to kill? No, but they taught me and taught me until my arms ache with sticking steel into sandbags. These hands that I want to use to heal, to save life, to give life, turned into hands for killing. I didn't want to kill that rat gamey. I only wanted to help. I know you did, Jericho. All we want to do is to help you. Me, Tile! Oh! Coming out, you guys. You're gonna see something. Come on, fall in there. Well, is there anything you need? Nothing you can do for me, sir. Thanks. Quick! March! There's something you could do for me, Captain. I'd, I'd like to go and sing with the boys. It may be my last chance. Done. Yes. Detail. Oh. You will take Jackson to the rest of the prisoners. I'll be personally responsible for it. Yes, sir. Come on out, Jackson. Fall in there. Detail. Quick. March. He couldn't show none. I can, huh? You heard me. to inject a serious note into the evening's entertainment. All over the world, 
people are gathered together on this night to pay homage to one who was born in a manger. It is fitting that we who are in foreign lands on a mission to free the world from tyranny should reverence his birth night, the master who died to make us free. We all know the story of the wise men guided by a brilliant star wending their way across the desert to find their holy child, the apostle of truth and righteousness. Tonight finds us gathered here as part of a gigantic crusade. Millions of men fighting to prevent truth and justice from being driven from this earth. Now let us sing Holy Night. Men, take off your hats. Let us pray. O Lord God, who hath today given thine only begotten Son. Get out of my Quick, tell the guy, by six foot three. Come on, where did he go? I guess he went in there, Sarge. And if he did, we got it. There isn't any way out of this, Dump. No him out, boys, but uh, don't take any chances. And if he gets nasty, shoot to kill. Come on. <laughs> Come on out, Jackson. We don't want to hurt you. Oh, who are you? What? Yes, you. It's Miss Old uh, Anatole France. Ah, oh, this is one of those African bogeys, Sarge. Did you see another big thing around here? The brother American. Bonsoir, monsieur. Oh, pray de ma bonde, il fait bon, fait bon. Thank you. 
Captain, it's a glaring example of gross negligence. You exceeded your duty in allowing Jackson to accompany the other prisoners. And as much as I hate to accuse you flatly, it appears like collusion. Well, sir, I've asked to be allowed to search for the man. I'm sure I can find him. He'll be found all right, but not by you. You report to your quarters under close arrest. Come on, snap out of it. Where's Logan? Hey! Wait, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't mean to kick you so hard. Have him make this guy understand some American way. Hey, look. I got dough. Buku, Franks, go on. Take it. You're yours. Franks. Guess we have plenty of use for this before we get through. Hey, what's the idea? He's trying to make me believe he didn't understand my lingo. Come on, give me back my dough. Them my French, you know. You got them under false pretenses. Maybe I'll split it with you if you're a good boy. You steer a boat? And I steer a boat. Why? There's a rudder. Of course, it's due south. I got to get some sleep. Ah, uh, who's the skipper of this ship? I am. Uh, I guess you're right. So I went a lot of doing a crap game, see? So I turned myself Paris. That's the spot for me. Everything goes well, I get to Bordeaux last night. The MPs are looking for a murderer. Mmm, tough monster, they tell me. Guy without a pass ain't got a chance. I meet your frog, who for a couple of hundred francs, he'll get me out of town on these boats. We'll lay in a flock of these groceries, and here we are. Hey, where is that guy? Hey, Lubin! I got rid of him. What do you mean, you got rid of him? Hey, who are you, anyway? I'm that tough murderer the MPs were looking for. Oh. Go on. Wait a minute. I'm not going to hurt you. Hey, where, where are you taking me anyway? Look, I'm not going anywhere. It's honest. I don't know. Chapman said the wise men found truth and righteousness in the desert. Oh, there's wise guys there. <laughs> I get it. You're nuts. Hey, look, we ain't got no desert lying around here, you know. Maybe we'll find one. Ah, you're kidding. <laughs> you ain't no murderer, are you? Maybe you wouldn't think what I did was murder. Accident, anyway. Oh, what is accident? Oh. Captain John Mack, you are dishonorably dismissed from the Army of the United States and sentenced to serve five years in a military prison. The severity of this sentence is largely due to the inability of this general court martial to take testimony from the deserted Jackson, which might have disproved the charge of aiding and abetting the prisoner's escape. Have you anything to say? Escort, quick, march! Boy, we're sunk or sinking. The faster you bail her out, the quicker she fills up. Yes, you're right. Well, we better feature, take what we can carry, and get on shore. Yeah, that's as far as we're going to go. Well, you sure found something that looks like a desert anyway. Give me the Riviera. Come on, let's get going. Where to? Well, they're just walking until we find a town or a camp or something. Or nothing. Boy, you sure got what it takes to travel, and that's no sense at all. Plenty lucky to find his first aid kit on board. Yeah, we'll need it, too. Okay, Gary, come on down. We've got enough for a regiment. 
Not bad, eh? Got an admission hard tag anyway. Well, I'll say. Well, we're on our way, boy. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, you are now gazing upon the world's most famous strongman, the mighty Jericho. Come a little closer, folks. Don't be afraid. This is absolutely a free demonstration. Are you satisfied fully that that is a strong rope, that there are no weak spots in it? You are. That's what they all say. I want to give you a rough idea, ladies and gentlemen, just what he eats. Nails, razor blades, secondhand streetcars, sledgehammers. He even uses a coffee cup <laughs> to drink out of a bed. <laughs> you watch me now, folks. Watch me very, very closely around the torso first. You see? I'll do it twice. Makes no difference to Jericho. When he expands, it breaks like pieces of cotton. All right, now exhale. You get it, ladies and gentlemen? Take it easy, big boy. I think I've cut the rope too deep. Now, ladies and gentlemen, watch closely, and the mighty Jericho will astound you. Do your stuff, big boy. Isn't it marvelous? Isn't this stupendous, colossal, astounding, astonishing? Maybe there's a gent in the audience who thinks he can do the same thing. If there is, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a very generous offer. Any gent will come up on this stage. Now, and do the same thing, I will present with a huge bag of silver. Uh-oh, here's Junior again. All right, Junior, step right up. Here we are, folks. Here's the real rope. Now, once around the torso. Up. Once. Twice. Three times. Who are these men? I don't know, Captain. Now around the arm. Ordnance will talk to me with their papers. Yes, sir. Now we put the two arms together. There he is. Hey, mister. All you have to do is expand and win the big report the plan for the commandant with your papers. Profit. Now I'm going to pass among you, ladies and gentlemen. We're asking for our papers. We've got to get going. What a guinea. We're never going to light nowhere. Oh, we got to go. Man, I'm just passing the hat. No time to wait. Oh, let me pass it just once, will you, Jericho? Just one Come minute. On. Don't go away, folks. Just one minute. There'll be another show. When you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> you ought to report back this way. Processor, we're reporting back to Vanessa. Come on, Jerry, go. Get it. Now, quick! Hey! You went that way! Come on, back this way! Invite us in at dinner. Boy, could I eat a steak. Following? <laughs> yes. No! Man, I could eat a half a cow. Come on, let's get going. Who are you? A friend. I'm doing with you. Just Alice so far. We've traveled a long way. May we stop? Give me the smart. Chut, chut. <laughs> Looks like our luck's turned. You are not all hungry. There's no doubt at all, madam. Take care of the camels, boy. Huh? 
I get it. Not bad. Come on, Dusty. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 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 No, thanks. I'm not hungry. Mm. Oh, boy. Now, have a nice, big, fat, juicy cigar. Very kind to two strangers. How can my brother would have it, Sue? How far are you from your village? Three day a journey. Aren't you afraid to stay here alone? I have been tending flocks since I was a child. He's my brother. Who are these men? They come a great distance. I give them food. Why are you here? Guba was thrown from a camel. We're on our way to Togo to find a doctor. Sonny boy, you found your man. You're looking at the world's greatest doctor right here. Hiya, Doc. You're a physician? A what? No, he's a surgeon. He can cure a cold to cut off your legs. This may be the will of Allah. We fear our chief has broken his leg. It's a pleasure now. If your chief pay a little dough in advance. I should be glad to do what I can. We'll saddle our camels at once. A swell, broken down businessman you are. Three days traveling for what? A couple of bananas if you cure this egg and to kick the pants of your dog. Oh, I think I'll go home. <laughs> need, eh, Sheik? I shall walk again. In a few weeks. If what you say proves true, I will give you shelter and sustenance as long as you wish to stay. Thank you. We've been hoping for just such an invitation. Hello, boy, Sheik. You hear that, Jerry? We're going to settle down for once. Back tomorrow. In a week's time, you can throw that stick away. We need more quinine, Gara, for this malarial fever. For months, we've gotten along with what I brought with me. Now we need everything instruments, drugs. We can do so little for these people. present, it's impossible to get the supplies we need. Someday, Gara, with your help, we'll build a real hospital here. Then you'll understand why I complain. Behold the warrior bold. Listen, now, but just learn how to handle one of these toothpicks. Listen, big boy, from now on, I'll kill him and you cure him. Jericho will cure more than you will ever kill. Hey, listen, Tootsie, I ain't doing so badly. Am I Hassan? Very good indeed. Why don't you come on and learn to play dots with a game? Sorry, Mike, I've got work to do. Me too. I've been teaching Hassan the boys Boehner drove with these ladies. You should get married. Huh? Married? Not me. That's all right for you and Jerry. I'm already married to one. A red-headed mama. Boy, was she hot. <laughs> of course, we're all busted up love now. If she knew I was married to someone else, she'd swim the ocean and scalp today. Come on, Tuss, play one more game of dark. No cheating this time. <laughs>
way, Mac, I'll be sorry to lose you. You've been a model prisoner. Thanks. You get a reply from the war office yet? Yes. I'm afraid Jackson vanished completely. Isn't there any clue at all? Nothing. Not a trace of him has ever been found. There you are, Mac. That makes you a free man. Any plans? Yes. I'm going to get that man if it takes me the rest of my life. Well, good luck to you. Uh, do you think there can be any possible connection between the disappearance of this man, Jackson, and the theft of this fishing boat? How should I know? It was said he committed suicide. Oh, thanks very much. I have called you together so that Jericho may explain his project. See, Jericho. The time approaches for the annual trek to Dima. In the past, we have been enemies, each tribe traveling alone. And what has happened? We have been at each other's mercy, an easy prey for every band of robbers. Let us now declare a truce. Come together for our mutual protection, forming one mighty caravan, safe at least from each other. So with much less danger, we shall obtain our yearly supply of salt, and with more profit, barter our produce for supplies of all kinds. They are the words of a wise man. I am too old to go. Jericho will take my place. You will be under a brave and strong leader. What do you want in the first race, Chief? I'll take Whitey. Whitey? Look out now. I'll take the winner. One, two, three, go! Dead heat! Hey, come on. Second race. What do you want, Chief? Take Whitey the winner. Again. Whitey again. Change the position. One, two, three, go! <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> Three strangers approach in this direction. They ride in petrol wagons. Describe these people. They are white men. Like me? Yes. Send them here as soon as they arrive. Gotta watch our steps, Chief. Look. The great salt trick. What a bit of luck. How many camels do you suppose there are? I should say 12 or 15,000 at least. This is too good to miss. Come along. Give me a hand with the camera. A better way to get for this. We'll go down and out somewhere. Lucky to find it, eh, Hall? 
Ik is het weer. Ik wil je Kom op, ik denk dat het kan. Oh, hij is jacht, ja. My name is Crandall, the leader of expedition. Study deserts of people for museum, England. I would, would like permission to join Caliban and take photographs. This is Mr. Barton, our cameraman. How do you do? Our scientist, Mr. Hall. Ah, yeah, I go, you thing. you did Shut up, shut up, you fool. I'm introducing you. This is the. Oh, yeah, you did Gloria. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't do it in a while. In a while, yeah. I guess we're okay, Chief. Oh, you're American, aren't you? Oh, what do you think? Been here long? Longer than that. Oh. What are you doing here? Waiting for a streetcar? You are welcome. You have my permission. You'll never make it in those ten lizzies. Tell Hassan to provide the white men with camels. Okay, Chief. Thank you. We try not to get in the way. Wildest rumors we heard about this salt they couldn't touch the real thing. I found out a bit more about it this afternoon. Well, what have you all asked? Well, it seems once a year the natives load up all their produce, mill it chiefly, and go to the salt pit. They have to have salt for their camels and cattle. They can't live without it. It's called the terrarium. Where are these salt pits? Edema. There, the natives have nothing but salt. And they barter it for a year's supply of food and so on. How high? Oh, about two or three hundred miles. To the worst part of the desert. They do about two miles an hour and something like 40 miles a day. And we are going with them. Charming. Wish we had some decent jazz record. I'm fed up with that lot. Ah, that's because you don't understand good music. Those records were specially chosen. Not by me. I was sick of that tune years ago. And it should remind you of your happy middle age. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Won't you sit down? Will you um, have dinner? Thank you, no. You are an untidy devil, friend. We should have bought along a Hoover for you.
Let's be so... Hey, hey, Junior, get out of there. You've had enough. Come on, Violet. Come on, Violet. Hey. Oh, cut it out, Violet. We're going to have milk on this trip. Come on, Violet. Come on now. Help me up a little bit. Back up. Come on. Come on now. Will you cut that out? Now, there you are. Mahmoud, Abdul, get out. What's that? The trucks will be here when we get back. We should have to chance it. I say, can I? 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 Rockies 500 strong at Burn Togo, and are now marching to ambush the salt caravan in Tereb Pass. Why weren't we warned of it before? The Marrakesh attacked swiftly, and no messenger could make way through their camels. I alone escaped. You've done well. We have 200 horses. We could get there ahead of the Marrakesh. Good. Let the caravan go ahead without knowing this. Assemble the fighting men at once. We'll beat the raiders to Tarab Pass and clear the way. <laughs> How are you doing, pal? Got him licked, boy. Atta boy, Chief. Can I help you up? Uh, I'm all right. Ain't nothing the matter with me. I'm old.
Take the prisoners back to Fardu and clear the pass for the caravan. All ready. Right, let her go.
different phases of the trip succeeded each other like a series of dramatic episodes. The concentration of the great horde of camels from all over the Sahara, the commissariat, the celebration dances, culminating in the ancient practice of barter, millet, grain, foodstuffs and cloth, for that most vital necessity of desert lands, salt. The journey back was 30 days across a region of indescribable desolation with a camel load of 2,000 tons. Thousands of animals in a string 12 miles long, 20 hours a day. The leaders on their way again before the end of the caravan had even come to camp. It was our first experience of a long voyage on a ship of the desert. And when we dismounted at the end of each weary day, we found that camel riding had brought into being a hundred muscles that we never knew we had. Without a moment's notice, the wind may change a still desert into a screaming volcano of piercing needles. So loads of salt were piled into an impromptu windbreak. We used our camera cases and the needs of civilization to achieve the same result. As you can imagine, some of these crates brought us much comfort. With no hitching post handy, every camel must be hobbled at nightfall. For of all the creatures which serve mankind, there is none so perverse and infuriating as that hunchback, knock-kneed, slobbering son of a cross-eyed camel. Junior style is also cramped with it. To see them chewing over the evening meal, they might be a bunch of old gentlemen in a London club, but at heart they're just as awkward as nature could make them. Babies are babies no matter what the breed, but like all babies, they're always ready for a meal. After 14 days on a lolloping, grunting, sweating camel, I used some of our precious drinking water for washing. I should have washed the camel. Now the barefoot tribesmen stamped out our flowers and we prepared to leave, with the usual squeals and grunts of protest from the camel. One is refusing to get down to be reloaded. One is refusing to get up for some other reason, or for no reason at all except that he is a camel. When we were all ready to leave, we found that Holt, our bug hunter, was missing. But it turned out that he was just doing a bit of overtime. What he caught came off the camel, but the camel won't miss just one. He's got a million of them. Now the caravan is really underway once more. Centuries ago, in some era long forgotten, just such caravans as these pursued their laborious way across the scorching sand. And we in our modern kit felt strangely out of place in a setting that seemed to belong to the days when the world was young. The same primitive rules of the caravan still hold good today. Sometimes one unfortunate beast would drop in its tracks exhausted, for it is the survival of the fittest. Quickly the load was shifted over to a spare camel, and the casualty left to get back home as best he might, or die beneath the pitiless sun. The leader of the trek was a giant negro. When first we encountered this strange man of the desert, he was attended by a white lieutenant, an American, who disappeared somewhat mysteriously shortly after our arrival. In fact, the leader himself left the caravan for two weeks, rejoining us only when we were about to leave Dima, the city of Salt. Then it was that we learned of the great desert battle that had taken place a little distance from the route of the caravan. Led by the giant Negro, the warriors had defeated a marauding tribe of Moroccish bandits. At first, our leader was a bit camera shy, but eventually we succeeded in winning him over by presenting him with our portable gramophone. And I, for one, was glad to see it go. It was a poor reward for the thrill we had had in becoming part of this amazing caravan. And it seems incredible that the outside world would have known nothing of this epic journey across the limitless desert, but for this photographic record. Better help you to get down there, Major. Give me a chance to wash up my record. The Sahara is a mighty big place, Mac. I'll find him, all right. I'll bring him back, king or no king. But just think what it means to me. Complete pardon, honorable discharge. I'd sure like to help you, but... Well, I don't care what sort of plane it is, so long as it hangs together. Well, what do you say? <laughs> Let's put on the lid, Mammy's gonna bake a little shortening bread. That ain't all she's gonna do. Mammy's gonna make a little coffee too. Mammy's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mammy's little baby loves shortening bread. Mammy's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mammy's little baby loves shortening bread. <laughs> Oh, 
girl that stole a lad, stole a little girl and makes your new dress. Stranger Lions, bring him to me. Stranger, our leader wishes to speak with you. Come. Captain Mack! Well, what are you doing here? I've come to take you back. All right! Let him go. Leave us alone. I wouldn't try to use this. These people will tear you to bits. I don't happen to value my life very highly. Evidently. You were mad to try to take me single-handed. You haven't got a chance, Captain Mack. I suppose it'd be easy to destroy all evidence of my visit, eh? Very easy. You'd better go back. Forget about me. I'm not going back without you. Yes, you are. I'm going to give you a chance to get away. Very kind of you. I seem to remember my giving you a chance once. My place? Wouldn't you have done what I did? No. Maybe I was wrong. Why do you want to take me back? Because you ruined me. Because the army was my life. The only life I know, because of you, I was kicked out of it, disgraced, and sent to prison. Oh, I never thought for a moment they'd blame you. Well, they did. You mean you were court-martialed, cashiered? For aiding and abetting your escape. They sent you to prison? Right. Leavenworth, five years. That's terrible, Captain Mack. Can't tell you how sorry I am. There's nothing I can do now. These people need me. I... Gara, Captain Mack, my wife. Captain Mack's from my old home. We've known each other for some time. My son, Mike. You know, I've hated your guts for years. I've just waited for the time when I could drag you back to clear me. I've thought and planned of what I should do when I eventually found you. Now we... You understand why I can't go. I'm glad. Well, I guess I'm just about all in. Of course, you must have had a tough trip. Come, I'll take you to your room. Stranger will not take Jericho away. He'll leave here alone. No, we will return with many others. Then he must not go. Come on, Captain Mack. Huh? You've got to get out of here. You're in great danger. 
got it. I didn't make much of a hit. What's the trouble? My people have found out you've come to take me away. Once they're aroused, I'll never be able to control them. Is it light enough to take off? Oh, I think so. You may need a little help getting started, though. I'll help you. Stranger must never leave here. Get your horses. Thank you. 